Op het vrij gelegen terrein van de Haagse Cricket Club heeft het Nederlands elftal ten overstaan van zeker 4000 mensen historie geschreven. Maar toen Peter van Arkel en zijn mannen het veld betraden, was er niemand onder die 4000 die ook maar een ogenblik dacht aan de mogelijkheid dat Nederland in staat zou zijn het beroemde Australische cricketteam te verslaan. Voor 197 runs stond het Australische team aan de kant, waarna Nederland ongeveer drie uur de tijd kreeg om te proberen dit totaal te passeren. De Australiërs zetten als eerste bowler de snelle Connolly in. Maar Piet Marseille bleek er allerminst bang voor. Kort daarop moest ook aanvoerder van Arkel na een knappe, snelle innings van 45 het veld ruimen. De stand was toen 174. En er was geen hond die geloofde dat Nederland in een kwartier nog 24 runs zou kunnen scoren, al probeerde men het wel. En toch gebeurde het. Op bolen van Kouper wist Rudy Onstein in de laatste over van de wedstrijd de score op 201 te brengen, waarmee hij de Nederlandse overwinning tot een zekerheid maakte. Australië zat in zak en ashes, maar de Nederlandse aanhang vierde uitbundig feest. This is one of the earliest moments of glory in Dutch cricket. Australia was every bit the cricketing force it has always been. It had recently beaten England 1-0 in England to retain the Ashes. On their way back to Australia, they stopped over in the neighbouring Netherlands to play this one-day game. When Ruud Onstein hit the winning runs for Netherlands, he was literally creating Dutch cricket history. And so this is where Jacob Jan Esmeyer, former Dutch cricketer, begins his story of Dutch cricket. In his book Windmills, Dykes and Wides, which he has co-authored with Krijn Froelijk. We have to start somewhere and we thought like, you know, Ruud Onstein is probably the, the oldest, or he is the oldest guy in the book, being the guy that hit uh, the winning runs against Australia. So we thought that that would have been the perfect tee-off for the book. Holland was able to beat Australia, although Australia was playing on um, on rubbers which they had never worn and they were just put uh, in 10 minutes after the match started because they were all wearing their spikes, but they couldn't because then they would, um, they would screw up our coconut netting. It is tempting to say that Dutch cricket has come a long way ever since, but it is still a fringe team. And the truth is that even today, if the Dutch were to beat Australia, it would still be considered an upset. Part of this has to do with how international cricket is set up. The top 12 teams play each other regularly. The remaining 93 teams, called associate teams, have to compete for the handful of spots to play the top nations. This is usually at select tournaments, like the World Cup. So associate teams do not get enough opportunities to play the top teams and break into the top level. Nevertheless, the Netherlands recently had a breakthrough of sorts when they qualified for the One Day International Cricket League which will be played between 2020 and 2022. In this league, they will be playing as a 13th team along the 12 regular teams. So Jakob Jan's book comes out at an important point in Dutch cricket history. Starting from that match against Australia in 1964, it chronicles some key moments and key players that have shaped the sport in this country of 17 million people and around 6,000 active cricket players. Back in the 70s and 80s, there were two people, Anton Bakker, probably the best captain Holland has ever had, and Stephen Lovers, who is also part of the book. They just wanted to make sure, like, how are we going to change things for Dutch cricket, you know? We should get more matches because in days if they play an international match, they will just rock up one hour prior to the match and then they'll get, you know, warm up and they'll play. Now they go into hotel, team meetings, blah, blah, blah. And I think if it hadn't been for Anton Bakker and Steven Lewers, who had a list of demands for the KNCB, our Royal Dutch Cricket Association, that was the tipping point of a more pro professional approach. Um, so they needed sponsorships, uh, they needed better oppositions, because if you play better teams, you become better yourself, uh, you get more crowd in. So all these things were written down and the KCB really did a big effort to do so. I think uh, Rob van Wilde uh, was once an opening bowler for Holland, also was in that same era uh, very active and wanted to put cricket more uh, towards a well serious and professional approach. Uh, I can definitely not go around to Tim De Leder, who is, uh, I think he's played 370 matches for Holland. Uh, I think he participated in, uh, I think, three World Cups. Yes, three World Cups. So he, he would definitely be in. 
Um, and um, I've also thought of Ryan Ten Doeschaten as the best all-rounder that a team can ever think of. Well, also Ronald Lefevre has been tremendous uh, as, as a player and as a captain. So there's been about six to seven national cricket in the county circuit uh, from Dutch. Uh, and it started all with uh, Paul Jan Bakker. He played with Hampshire and he was a member of Quick Hague Cricket Club. But he was the first uh, one to make the move to the other side of the North Sea to play for Hampshire. And in his line, well, various other professionals followed. So, um, like Ronald Lefebvre and André van Troost for Somerset, and Alexi Curvese for uh, Worcestershire, and Bas Suiderend for Sussex, and Paul van Meekeren for Somerset again. But I think that Paul Jan Bakker was regarded the, uh, well, call it the Nestor of uh, of cricket as a professional, uh, as a profession. Um, I would first go for the uh, 2003 World Cup match against Namibia in Bloemfontein in South Africa. That's where we got a second wicket partnership of 254, I think, between Feiko and Feiko Kloppenburg and Klaas Jan van Noordwijk, who will also be in the book. They both got a hundred. He's taken the quick single, if he hits his out, he would have been run out, he's got his hundred and he's overjoyed. Not even looking to see if the second run was on. He was struggling to get there and he's done it. Uh, and we got like um, 320 or something, I can't recall, against Namibia. And it, it was, in the end it was the first victory of the three World Cups for the Netherlands. So that was, I think, very important. At, uh, the way the Holland players celebrate their first win in World Cup cricket, didn't they deserve it? Uh, then 2009, the T20 uh, victory over England at Lords. Well, it's, it really uh, doesn't get any better than that on the last ball uh, with a lot of people from Holland having been witnessed over there. Seward Broad stops it, doesn't get the direct hit. He's coming back for the second. Would you believe it? Overthrow gives Netherlands a win. And what an upset in the very first game of the ICC World 2020. Netherlands cannot believe it. And Overthrow giving them the winning run. You beauties, Netherlands. You play brilliant cricket here in this first game. Spoiled England's party big time. And I also think that in that top three, I would take the Netherlands taking on Ireland in the World Cup cricket T20, where they needed to score like, I don't know, 200 runs in, 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 in 12 overs or so. But it was just to show the world that, well, Holland in their bright orange uh, kit uh, were not just like uh, puppets on the string. You know, they could definitely bet and bowl. And if you have a YouTube uh, channels, you will find the match. And well, Tom Cooper that day was unbelievable. Uh, I think he was hitting sixes like a machine. And um, apparently, uh, it, it was a nice wicket to bet on. That makes a difference. But still, you have to hit, hit those sixes. Still, there's pressure. Still, you have to do it in 13.2 overs. So, massive, massive, massive victory. Oh, would it be? Look at it go! Unbelievable scenes. The Dutch dugout have come herring onto the ground. This is the most incredible match you have ever seen. As of now, in May 2020, Dutch cricket stands at an exciting crossroads. Beginning of the ODI league means that Netherlands will get to play one day international series against eight of the 12 top teams. Very importantly, this is an opportunity to boost cricket's popularity in this sports loving country. About two or three years ago, the World Cup uh, rugby uh, was, uh, was held. Um, there was a Dutch TV channel, uh, RTL 5, I think who broadcast every match. They had like one anchor man who used to be a rugby player himself. And apparently after those four or five weeks, the rugby clubs in Holland just couldn't count the number of new members. So I think visibility, and I'm not talking about a, a one page article in a newspaper because children don't read newspapers. They just have to see it, especially those matches where there's like big opponents and there's interest from media and I'm talking TV media that will definitely 
boost uh, Dutch visibility. So the corona pandemic and lockdowns could not have come at a worse time. The Netherlands has banned all sporting events until September 2020. As a result, matches against West Indies, Pakistan and New Zealand have had to be postponed indefinitely. Uh, planning, you know, uh, hospitality, ticketing, um, the, the accommodation, uh, rolling the wickets, um, volunteers, everything now because of Corona has just uh, sacked in like a, like a plum pudding. So I think overall, the, um, yeah, the disappointment with the KNCB, of course, because it would have been a perfect poster because you will not only attract people from Holland, even there's apparently a very big uh, Pakistani community in, Nor in Norway. Uh, you know, they had probably already booked their tickets on a plane to Amsterdam and watch one or all matches. It's um, it's it's such a shame that uh, at the moment and, you know, even for the West Indies, how, how cool are these guys? Who doesn't want to see uh, Chris Gilbert in, in Amstelveen? Uh, Health-wise, we don't uh, stand a chance if you give Corona a second chance. So um, I think everything has been done right and the, the right choices have been made to postpone these uh, this, these events. But yes, definitely a, a cricketless summer is like a, a summer without sun, you know, like it just doesn't feel right. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a big loss, but hopefully um, our patients will be rewarded when those matches are rescheduled.